Welcome back everybody to another service video. This video is going to talk about wiring temp sensors in a hood control package and the importance of getting it exactly right. Be sure to follow all safe work practices, especially the use of PPE. All circuits should be de-energized prior to any wiring or service. Remember, many of our controls will have more than one circuit that will need to be turned off. After de-energizing the circuit, verify that the circuit is dead, then lock out and tag the breaker. I think it'd be helpful to start by identifying the parts of a hood control package. The first is the hood itself. Temp sensors are going to be mounted in the exhaust risers or in the hood itself near a light fixture. The second portion is the PSP or perforated supply plenum. That's the large uh, supply plenum that's in front of the hood that delivers dedicated makeup air down the front of the hood. And that will have a temp sensor located inside of it. The second type is an AC PSP or an air conditioned PSP. This has two sections, it has a large section, standard PSP with a temp sensor, but it also has a small section that delivers conditioned air into the kitchen. And it will also have a temp sensor. These uh, PSP or the AC PSP are always shipped loose. So these sensors will always have to be field wired. If you have multiple hoods, you may have some hood sensors that also have to be field wired. If your system doesn't come with a PSP or an AC PSP, don't panic. Not every system has it now. As you know from my other videos, the temp sensors get wired here to the T-terminals on the circuit board. The wiring diagram will show you which sensors get wired where, so that when the system is complete, everything works the way it should. Wiring the correct sensor to the correct terminal is critical because they're used to control the auto on function, as well as the fan speed in a demand control ventilation or DCV system. In smaller systems where there's only one exhaust fan and one supply fan, temp sensor wiring is pretty simple. Just wire the temp sensors to the correct terminals per the wiring diagram. In larger projects where there are multiple hoods and fans, it's critical to wire the temp sensors to the correct terminals, so the correct sensor will control the correct fan. First, let's look at the wiring diagram. Each temp sensor is listed on the diagram along with its location. The first sensor will always be the room temp sensor and will be wired to terminals T1, A, and B. Unless your system is using a wireless sensor or a preset room temperature, there will be no wires on the T1 terminals. Next will be the hood sensors. In this example, we have three hood sensors, hood one, riser one, hood one, riser two, and hood two, riser one. The labels on each hood will give you the hood number and the riser on the left of the hood when facing the hood is always riser one and riser two is always on the right. Just match the correct sensor to the wiring diagram and to the correct T terminals and terminate. As always, once the temp sensor wiring is complete, it's recommended that you fully test the functionality of the system to ensure everything's running correctly. Just a reminder, only use a low temperature heat source or a cold rag to test the temp sensors. Never use a torch or heat a temp sensor for a long period of time. Here's a hypothetical situation that will uh, emphasize the importance of making sure you get the temp sensors wired to the correct terminals. Let's say you have a customer with two exhaust hoods and two exhaust fans, one for each hood. If you wire the temp sensor in hood two to where the sensor for hood one should be, when you start your appliance under hood two, like a solid fuel charbroiler, for example, the sensor will warm up, but the fan for hood one will speed up. If this happens, you run the risk of setting off the hood fire system because you won't be moving enough air and overheating will occur. Now imagine your customer in this situation. He has a fire system discharge and the cleanup involved, loss of product, loss of sales from having to close, and so on. You don't want to be in that position of telling the customer that something was wired wrong. That's it. It's that simple. Remember that every job is custom built, so there's no two jobs alike. The wiring diagram on your job site is critical to making sure that everything gets wired and functions properly. If you have any questions about this or any of our products, feel free to call or email. Thanks for watching.